Hello, Eric. Hello, Richard. It's so nice every week to be able to sit down and talk to you and get your impressions about what's happened in the past week. Always great to sit down with you too. Anything in particular uh, jarring for you last week? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, I watched Elon on doing a 20-minute interview, which was fascinating. I'm always interested in ChatGBT, which I feel like you're an early adopter with. And I feel like even the early adopters, this, the pace seems breathtaking uh, at how the changes are coming and the information is coming. And the what seems like mainstream, you know, a lot of people are jumping on board very quickly. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that struck me, there was a piece in the Wall Street Journal where their technology columnist uh, like made a I an AI version of her face and her voice. And with those tools was able to fool her family and her bank. And this is a serious development, <laughs> you know? So um, there's something in computer science called the Turing test named after Alan Turing from uh, 1950 when he first proposed the Turing test which was basically that if you could take a person and a computer and kind of put them behind a screen and then get another person, the tester, right? And have that tester interact with the computer and the person and then see if, if the tester could tell the difference between a person and a computer, right? And that um, this, this, this test would sort of mark the, the beginning of the era of machine intelligence and that's pretty much where we are right now, right? If you are interacting with chat GPT and you're interacting with a person and you're trying to tell which one is human, um, you'll be hard pressed to tell. <laughs> so <laughs> that opens up a whole new uh, can of worms for the internet because we've been really leaning on what I'll call the Turing test to, um, or what is called the Turing test, right? In order to establish that we're human. You know, you and I are having this conversation right now online. I can't reach out and touch you, right? <laughs> and uh, so we have to accept certain limitations, but look, you know, you look human to me. You look like my friend, Eric. Uh, you know, your words sound like a human. But we're getting to the point where that can be impersonated by a machine. And so what does that mean for our online lives? I think this is really, uh, in my mind, it's fast becoming one of the biggest questions for the future of the internet period. And, and what about as it pertains to security? I mean, they used to say, you know, uh, uh, we built firewalls and hackers just got taller ladders. Uh, that was in the days when it was simple to explain. How will yeah. this impact, you know, online security? I'm starting to think that we're going to need something like a DMV for the internet. Someplace yeah. that you can go in person and say, you know, look, here I am. I just don't see how we're going to be able to really have security, have secure identity online in an age where machines can spoof humans. Yeah. And so I think this is the kind of thing, you know, that really is going to completely upend our experience of the internet in the next few years. In the next few years. So yeah, soon. well, I mean, I mean, it's kind of already happening right now. I think it's just so early that no very few people realize the power of this new technology of large language models like Chat GPT. But and as you were just describing to me before, uh, about one of your own accounts that you need to access that you didn't have all the factors in the two fact mm -hmm. authentication. And what you were describing to me sounded like it had to be you holding up your license. It's the only way that I know that it's you. Is right. That so I had some crypto left on Binance 
and finance is in trouble with the U.S. regulators right now. They don't see eye to eye, and so they want to get rid of all U.S. citizens operating on the non-U.S. version of Binance. So I this was used to be a small amount of crypto back in 2018, and now it was you know a non-trivial amount of crypto, not not a big uh, mother load or anything, but enough that I wanted to get it off of there. And so I had to make a video of myself, you know, holding up my driver's license in order for them to say, okay, you know, that appears to really be Richard Smith. And but how does that, you know, what does that do in a world where a machine can basically create that video and the sound of my voice, you know, and have a uh, even carry on a conversation that appears to be me over a short period of time. I don't know. You know, that's uh, we're, we're getting into uncharted territory. Well, they had talked about a long time ago. I mean, a, a very long ago when, when, I, when I was doing work at the Pentagon, they had talked about the type of security that would be in the future would have to do with the way that I type because I have my own ways of typing on a keyboard. Do I, which letters do I use with which fingers? Because I don't type necessarily exactly right. right. Uh, what's my heartbeat? Is it, is, it act, is it actually me? None of that ever came to pass. It, it, we're still relying on passwords uh, sent to a second you know, place. Absolutely. You know, like I can't go into my bank without a code that they text to my phone. Somebody yep. on my phone, it, it begs the question, they can go into my bank. It doesn't seem like it's too foolproof to me, and it's my bank. So look, chat GPT and the large language models that are behind technologies like chat GPT blur the lines, I think, um, beyond recognition for what it means to be a human being online. And this online world, you know, I, for a long time, I've been talking about the distinction between our real world lives, you know, and our online lives. And I've been saying, you know, the online world is, is a, uh, it's kind of an economy. It's, it's a, it's a aspect of our real lives, but it doesn't capture the whole, you know, kit and caboodle. And so now with the um, obliterating, obliteration of the Turing test, you know, it's the gloves are off. This online world is going to be dominated by autonomous AI agents, machine agents that you will not be able to distinguish from human beings. What that means for the future of the internet, I don't know at this point, but the idea that we have, that we're individuals, you know, living in the real world, that we have some autonomy, some control, some ability to, you know, recognize other human beings as human and to do and to have commerce with them is gone. It's just gone. Nobody's figured this out yet, or not very many people have figured it out yet. So it's going to take a while for that shock to really set in. But that is what we're dealing with. I I think. It's kind of a nail in the coffin for the idea that the online world can be some kind of utopia, some kind of, you know, extra um, governmental <laughs> entity that, um, you know, uh, gives us freedoms that we can't find in our local uh, communities or nations or states or whatever, um, because really there's not going to be any way to have a secure online identity in a purely digital machine-based world. And uh, just one other topic. I don't know whether, if you want to talk about it or not. It's personal. Sure. Um, I, I, I know you're intending to go off the grid for a few days this week, yeah. um, which I don't think people do anymore, ever. It sounds like a very healthy idea. Yeah. I think it's more and more critical. I'm telling you, yeah, it's these digital devices have taken over our lives. And we don't uh, have relationships with each other, with nature, other than through this kind of 
digital medium um, in the way that we ultimately value. Uh, just a, a small anecdote. Uh, my son had a violin recital the other week, and there were a few other um, students presenting. And, you know, there was one young man who played the piano. He played Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. And I'm watching him play, and I said to myself, look, you know, a machine could play this much better. <laughs> right. Um, but to see this young man who had been working for 10 years to make this effort to play Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, see his family there, right? See him in real life making this effort. That was more interesting to me than a machine playing the Moonlight Sonata perfectly. I think humans are interested in humans. Humans are interested in nature. Humans are interested in a more fully dimensional experience than can be captured in our digital world, right? We have more than just a couple of senses, right? We have five senses at a minimum. And so I think when people look at this digital world and realize that they don't really have much of a chance of competing against the machines and that as we see day to day that this dominance of the machines is um, you know, impairing our ability to have meaningful relationships with one another and to have meaningful relationships with nature, that more and more people are going to just say, hey, <laughs> I got to step back from this. But, but isn't the risk, and you know that I completely agree with you and we're both parents, isn't the risk that kids today, they're, they're literally born into a digital world. They don't need what you're talking about, which I completely yeah. agree with. They're not, they're not exposed to, you know, from the stroller. Well, I moved out into the woods so that my kids wouldn't have to have that experience. And they haven't had that experience. You know, they don't, they spend a little time online, but it's hard for me to get them to respond to an email within a few days, you know? So, <laughs> so again, you know, it's ultimately a choice, right? So I'm making the choice to go off the grid um, with my kids for a few days. And it's a choice. And it's partly driven by man, like this online digital reality that everybody's racing into um, is not sufficient. It's not truly satisfying. I can't have control over it. I don't have control over it. It's clearly um, influencing my thoughts and my feelings, what I see and what I don't see. And if I want to have true autonomy, you know, there's a there's kind of a limited um, environment in which I can enjoy that autonomy, and it's not the online world. Yeah, I, I would be very interested to hear when you return. Yeah. Your, uh... Uh, off the grid experience and <laughs> what that felt like for you and right. your kids. We'll talk about it next week. Great. Good, good to talk to you, Eric. Uh, nice to see you as always, Richard. Bye.